Hi, I'm Daniel Lee, and today I'm going to be telling you about a stereo vision system that's produced by the company Econ Systems called the Terra that they have nicely provided me with to test so that I can tell you about it. I'll be unboxing it and taking a look at what you can get set up and running straight out of the box. Stereo systems, stereo cameras are very, very interesting because they operate on the same principle as our eyes. So you can make them uh, using very simple principles. Um, out of two cameras, and two cameras that observe the same scene can reconstruct how it is in three dimensions, just like your eyes do. This is possible to do with very simple cameras. This is, for example, a setup that I've made and written about in my blog. It's simply two webcams that you nail to a board, basically, and you can use that to produce 3D images. And this costs about 40 bucks. If you do that, you can get pretty good results, and I've written open source software that lets you do that fairly easily, but you're going to have quite a bit of work with it. Some of the work will be calibrating your camera, so you need some kind of object that you know the characteristics of, and you can figure out the characteristics of your 3D rig. The advantage of a commercial system is A, you don't have to build it yourself, and B, you can expect a much higher quality. This comes from a factory, and Something that I particularly like about it is that it's pre-calibrated. So I should be able to take it out of the box and start playing with it immediately. And that's what we're going to do now. So the quality of the box is pretty nice. It's got a magnetic latch here. And uh, there's not too much in the package. It's just a USB cable, which simultaneously provides the power for both of the cameras that are inside of this housing. So you can see here's camera one, here's camera two. And I really like the housing as well because it's it's very easy to mount on something so that it's looking directly at a target. So I'm quite pleased with that at the moment. Something I'm a little bit sad about is that it it's a bit wonky to set up on Linux, which is why I'm going to be using a Surface tablet to show this to you. Uh, but I think the results will be quite interesting. So I'm going to set it up in the background and come back to you with it all ready to go. And I'm back. This is the camera, this is the computer that I would like to have worked with. It's my Linux computer, but the setup, as I said, was a little bit difficult. I'm going to be using a Surface 4 Pro with 4 gigabytes of RAM, and I think it only has an onboard graphic card, so it'll be a bit interesting to see how fast it can process imagery. As you can see, you just attach the USB cord here and you can tell that everything's functioning correctly because the light is on and in order to verify the measurements that we make I have a tape measure. It's not the most robust way of verifying measurements but it should let us know if things are in the ballpark. Welcome back. I've just installed the Terra SDK. We saw that the camera was connected to the computer and everything was working. It's a very simple process. You plug in the USB cord on both sides and then you're done. The installation is also fairly straightforward. You download the MSI and it packs itself out somewhere that you specify containing all the dependencies that you need and then I found it a little bit hard to find the binaries but they're all here with their DLLs. So I'm in the PowerShell now, I'm in the appropriate folder and as you can see there are a lot of DLLs that are packed with the binaries. If we take a look at only the executables we've got a number of demonstration programs that we can all try out and because it's an SDK of course you can start building your own applications immediately, but I'd like to see just what they have right out of the box. So I'm going to try the TerraCam viewer, and this will let us see the camera feed. The first thing that pops up in any of these programs is it asks you for the device number that you want to work with. I'm not quite sure why, because it's not necessarily necessary. It could figure it out based on the device ID or the device name. But that's fine, then we get to choose the resolution that we want to see things in. Now what happens here is a window pops up. That window is right over here. And what you'll notice is that you have on the left side a view from the left camera and on the right side a view from the right camera. This is my hand, so you can see it's scaled to fill the whole screen, otherwise it would just be too big. Uh, everything looks a little bit funny. What you're looking at is a monochrome image. Monochrome is good for stereo matching. Uh, some stereo applications will take monochrome images um, and use them for the stereo matching, 
while retaining color information and that they reconstruct the colors of the individual points in the point cloud that's produced by passing those into the points after they've been reconstructed. This is in the case here, the cameras themselves are monochrome, which has some advantages in terms of speed, but it means that you have about three times less information. It's okay though, because we're going to be using this for 3D reconstruction, volume estimation, navigation, that kind of thing. So this is the view from my balcony. And I think the balcony is a nice, rich environment for checking out the 3D sensing capabilities of this camera. Now, as I mentioned before, you have to calibrate a camera that you build yourself. This is calibrated in the factory, and then it's put into a housing. So you know that the calibration is solid um, and it's static. So it's not that easy to recalibrate. The thing is, it should work fairly well straight out of the box without any kind of intervention at all. So let's open up the depth viewer and see what kind of depths that we can measure. Again, the same game. What device do I want to work with? Where we resolution. And now what you see is on the lower left corner of my screen is the left camera view. On the lower right side is the right camera view and up at the top is the disparity map. This is the disparity between matching pixels measured from, from both cameras. And as you can see, there's a color bar that tells you how high the disparity is and if you know things about your camera, meaning if your camera is is calibrated, then you can reconstruct based on the disparity of matched pixels how far the way they are from you. It's simple triangulation. And what you can see here is even on fairly homogeneous structures like the ground here that's sloped away from me, you can see that there's a gradient. Um, so it's doing a good job of matching pixels in fairly difficult circumstances. It's a little bit fuzzy over by the bars that make up the, um, the railing and you can easily recognize structures such as the plants here in the foreground and the bars that hold up the ceiling of the balcony. And there up there is the balcony ceiling and everything beyond the balcony is blue. That's because the distance is saturated. So there's basically no telling how far away it is. It's just very far away, which is the same thing that you would experience if you're looking at the scene with your eyes. Things are just kind of far away and you don't really get a sense of depth based purely on your stereo capabilities because you have two eyes. You're using other algorithms like structure from motion. Now the cool thing is now we can take a look at some structures. So I'm going to place the camera on the table. And where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it right here. Now what the camera is seeing is mostly the edge of the table. And this is just due to the tension of the cord. But it's also seeing in the background the plants. And something cool that this application has is that you can touch it and it'll give you a distance reading, which is fluctuating a bit. So you can recognize by looking down that this is part of the table. And of course, those readings are totally off the, off the wall because they're way too close. But this is the distance to the flower pot. And it's fluctuating right around 70, let's say 75 centimeters. So I'm going to measure that now with a measuring tape. I'm measuring from the baseline between both cameras in as straight a line as I can get it. And it's coming up at about 70. So that's pretty good. I would actually say that's very good. And if we take a look at some other things, like for example, this chair, here you get very clear readings. You can see the distance to the ground is calculated as 180 centimeters. Distance to the chair is about 70 centimeters. Let's test that, again using the tape measure. and my foot. That's just about correct. 
I'm getting a slight bias on the readings, and this bias is positive, meaning that the distances that the camera's reporting are a little bit higher than what I'm actually measuring. This might be due to me measuring wrong. It might be a bias in the camera. Um, I don't know. But this is a thing that you could find out and then use in your application. Uh, whatever you use this camera for. So something that I would like to use it for would be to mount it on a robot and have it reconstruct its surroundings based on what it sees. So this is just a taste of what the Terra camera is capable of. I'm pretty happy with it and I'll provide updates as I go about other cool things it could do. Thanks for watching.